I want to talk about inverse kinematics and how it relates to my particular robot. One of the things that I made a bad assumption originally was that my robot leg was similar enough to a servo-powered robot leg that I could use the same equations. Not quite as I've determined. Give you the difference. If we look at this as a leg for a hexa, uh, hexapod being run by servos, is the typical right here would be the motor. Um, this motor uh, dot right here would be the motor for the coxa, which swings it side to side. The next one would be the femur motor, which lifts this up and down. And then here, this one causes the whole leg to flip in and out. And this is going to be the tibia. So <clears throat> these angles here that you've got right here, right here, are only controlled by the position of the motors. <clears throat> In the inverse kinematics calculations for this hexapod, I'm going to look at it in two ways. The first way I'm going to look at it is going to be an overhead view of the leg. If I look at this and this point, the being your X and Z uh, point, uh, this would be the coaxa. This is the length of the coaxa and going out to the femur and then all the way out to the leg tip. This length I'm going to call L1. To calculate this L1 it's simply going to be this right triangle right here which comes out to x squared plus y squared and taking the square root of that gives me the L1 value. To calculate the angle and this is going to be the angle that the uh, coaxa motor has to move to so the coaxa angle is equal to the arc tangent of the z divided by x. Very simple on this particular equation. Now on this admittedly poor drawing of a side view of the leg, this is the design that this leg uses. is uses a parallelogram versus what your typical servo-based motor use, uh, hexapod uses, which would be a femur motor here, which lifts this assembly up and down, tibia servo being here in this corner, which swings this in and out. My design is a little different in that here we have got a parallelogram. And what I do, instead of having this moving, is I actually use the femur, uh, the femur motor to lift this portion of the parallelogram up and down, which causes the leg tip to move up and down. And then I use the tibia motor to actually move this leg in and out, which causes this leg to move in and out, which is the entire leg kick in and out. Difference that's going to happen on this one is that the angle right here, which is in most of the servo-based hexapods, is considered your tibia angle. I can't use that because that is not a fixed angle. That changes depending on what the angle of the femur and the tibia are. So these angles, the angles I'm concerned about is this angle right here, and I drew a straight line straight down, and the angle to here. So these are the two angles I'm mostly concerned about. So my tibia is coming off, uh, or say these both, the femur and the tibia angles are coming off of this pivot point right there. So what I'm going to do is show how these calculations work. In order to make this work, what I had to do is figure out is that since this is a parallelogram, what I can actually do is I can extend this parallelogram all the way down like this, and now I've got a parallelogram that is essentially the same as this, and it's going to move the same way. The angle here is the same angle as for this. The difference is, is I already know this length because this is the tibia. This is my tibia length right here, and this, here's my femur length, which is this also. So I've already got all four sides of this parallelogram are known, which is a big thing right there. Additionally, I can go and bisect this angle right here and just drop a line, we'll dot this line from the pivot point all the way down to the leg tip and this angle is going to be an angle that I can calculate out. Now I've got an angle that's going to be from here to here and from 
here to here. Using this information and knowing what this angle is will give me all the information I need to calculate my femur and my tibia angles. So, uh, judicious use of the uh, law of cosines is in order here and you can see here is one side right here of a triangle here's the, here's the other two sides here's the other side of that same triangle so based using the law of cosines I'll be able to calculate both this angle and this angle what I'm going to have to calculate now is also this angle here which turns out to be actually a um, right triangle now I already have some data here from earlier we calculated my L1 length which was from here to the leg tip we called that L1 so draw that in right down here the only thing I have to do is here's the coaxial right here so I need to this length of here is actually L1 minus the coaxial so again I can now calculate this by saying okay and this oh by the way this height is y which is also set by the program so this ends up with uh, let's give this an arbitrary value we're going to call this portion of it c my hypotenuse so my c is going to be equal to the square root of my y squared plus it's going to be l1 minus coxa squared. So uh, let's move that out so you can see it. So that's now going to give me the length over here of my C. So let's look at calculating these other angles next. So what we're going to do now is calculate this B angle right here which is going from which it makes up the triangle that goes use C tibia and femur. Using the law of cosines we calculate that's going to be c squared plus the femur squared minus tibia squared divided by 2 times c times f. And now that's going to give me the bravo angle. A similar calculation is going to calculate out this other angle right here which is between this portion that which is also remember the tibia length C and this length down here which is actually the femur so you'll end up actually with the calculation of C squared plus tibia the T squared tibia squared minus the femur squared divided by 2 times C times tibia so it's just kind of a rehash of this equation which will give me this value again right here which is remember this line bisects right there so I'm going to calculate right in there All right for this next angle which is going to be the C prime I'm calling it here which is bounded by the triangle right here Y the height bottom this uh, opposite leg is going to be the L L1 minus the coxa length and again the C so I've got several ways of doing this because this is actually a right triangle I use the little uh, cosines again to do that but that's probably a little more at calculation I need to do so what I can do here the easiest one I think is cosine of the angle is going to be equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse so the adjacent is the Y the hypotenuse is Charlie. I don't have to worry about this L1 minus coxa, but I, I could use, if I want to use the tangent or I want to use the sine, I uh, could also do it the same way. But this is going to give me now the angle, the C. So now that I know all that, it's fairly easy to now, it's just math of adding and subtracting these angles to come up with the femur angle. So the femur angle is going to be from this vertical line all the way over to the C so it's going to be this value right here and add on to it the B that we calculated here at the very beginning so we add these two angles together that will give me my femur angle 
to get my tibia angle, it's going to be, again, the C angle right here. But in this case, I'm going to subtract out the angle that we calculated for this portion of it. And I'll subtract those two, and that will give me my tibia angle. Uh, so this is uh, where we're pretty much going. It's and we've already calculated earlier are my cox angles. So now I've got all three angles ready to go. So now it's just a matter of using those and uh, programming that into the system because I will tell it, the robot, exactly what the x, y, and z values are where the x value is going to be the amount of the step that it's going to take. Uh, the z is going to be the distance that this is going to be out from that location. And the y is merely the height. And that's going to be uh, just program identified by the program. So those three are all identified by prog programmatically. And everything else is now a calculation. Hopefully this kind of clears up some of the, the math behind this thing. Now that I just have to validate the math is correct. And I'll be using Excel uh, by plugging these all into Excel and running various scenarios and manually entering those in to the leg and seeing how that goes. If that comes out the way I expect, which should be right, uh, then we'll start programming the inverse kinematics portion of this. Thanks for your attention. Bye.